do 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 Hello YouTube, it's Zinnia. I'm back. And it's Halloween, the day when the veil between this world and the Zinnia Jones world is thinnest. This year, I'm Randall Flagg, a sorcerer and a bad influence. So, it has been one year, four months, and 14 days since my last video. Where have I been all this time? What have I been up to? You know, I hope that when people remember I exist, it's accompanied by a sudden sense of dread and alarm. Like a feeling of, oh crap, I completely forgot about that. Like when you remember that your neighbor's away on vacation and you haven't fed their parrot for the past three weeks. Fortunately, things have been going just a little better than that for me. Really, I've been having a pretty significant year. I turned 30 this year. I started this channel when I was 19 and living with my parents, and now I'm the parent living with my kids. Also, I now have the body of a 30-year-old, so I've been making the best of that while wishing I'd gotten a lot more done with the energy I had in my 20s. I've been continuing to post essays on various gender-related topics this whole time, even if most of my YouTube viewers probably don't read them. And I started college this year. There's some serious context to this that makes it a much bigger deal for me than it would be for most people. My last experience with school was in 2003, and it ended with me dropping out after 10th grade. It's hard to describe just how poorly high school went for me, and how many unhelpful factors were present in my life at the time. I had skipped a couple grades, so I was 12 when I started high school in 2001, and I was already so physically underdeveloped that my pediatrician was trying to convince my mom I needed hormone injections. At least I managed to dodge that bullet, but I spent my days surrounded by thousands of people who towered over me, adults, or nearly adults, men with the minds of boys. That made it pretty difficult for me to feel comfortable and integrate with everyone else. Around the same time, one of my parents was going through a divorce that would stretch on throughout my entire time in high school. The situation at home was not healthy for me at all. Just a constant drumbeat of a man's terrifying, violent rages and the tense lulls between them, constantly hoping that today won't be one of the bad days, but knowing it probably will. It was an environment that just had no sense of safety for me, emotionally or physically. There really wasn't anywhere I could go that felt safe for me. And then when I was 13, I started experiencing severe depression and depersonalization, derealization, right around the beginning of sophomore year, almost exactly when I started experiencing the physical changes of puberty. It's difficult to convey the sheer extent and all-encompassing, suffocating devastation of the emotional desolation I experienced. It was as if one day my capacity to experience emotions was completely gone, like some part of my brain responsible for that had just suddenly died off. I couldn't feel anything about anything. Every moment I was awake or moving around, it felt like I was just a robot, not even really alive anymore. There was at least a solid year where I can remember feeling not a single emotion the entire time. And the entire world seemed to recede from me, like it was grayed out and something fundamentally separate from me, like I was an entity that didn't even exist as part of the world. This experience was total and uninterrupted. No feelings, no presence, no reality, no me. Every conscious second was like being smothered by an unseen veil for years. Even physical motion felt like swimming through invisible concrete, buried alive. It's been suggested that dissociation is a coping mechanism that can emerge during persistent high levels of stress and ongoing danger or trauma. If you can't feel anything, all that fear and anxiety can't reach you anymore. If you perceive yourself as being at a remove from the world and even from your own body, it's as if all the bad things aren't really happening to you and can't hurt you. This wasn't something I chose. It truly felt like something that had happened to me, something that couldn't be voluntarily shaken off. It's like a fuse blows in your consciousness, your entire sense of existence, to protect you from damage that you can't bear to experience anymore. That's not the best solution to those issues, but at that age, you don't have the option or the power to remove yourself from stressful circumstances or demand that those circumstances change. Given that I would be enduring this situation regardless, this was apparently how my mind endured it. Unfortunately, having no emotions and feeling like nothing in the world is real didn't exactly facilitate anything productive. 
It turns out when your brain decides not to let you care about what's happening anymore, well, you can't care about what's happening, even when it's expected of you. If nothing is real, and everything is just reduced to a sequence of lines and motions on a stage, if you feel absolutely numb and somehow even dead every single day, then it's almost impossible to believe that anything matters. What's the purpose of it all that I'm supposed to be working towards? So I couldn't bring myself to care about school anymore, to the point that I became completely non-functional. All it was to me was day after day of being a body that's carted to a building, shuffled between rooms, and carted away. I wasn't invested in my future at all. What did I have to look forward to, living out the rest of my life like this? But if constant stress was what had contributed to this profound state of dissociation, it soon became clear that I definitely still needed that protective mechanism. One of the worst things about failing out of school is how it happens in slow motion, stretched out for years. Every day presents a new opportunity for parents, teachers, family, friends, everyone to pick you apart about this, reiterating all their constructive and not-so-constructive criticisms. When I say not-so-constructive, what I mean is that the adults closest to me in my life seemed to be making a sustained effort to make me feel like I was being eviscerated for what I'd done. I was told on multiple occasions that, at the age of 14, I was somehow ruining my life by not succeeding at high school, as if I had committed some heinous and notorious crime that would mark me for life and prevent me from ever having a normal or functional existence. I was treated like I had wronged them personally, like I had sinned against everyone around me, like I had insulted the entire world with what I'd done. I was taken to a parade of counselors and psychologists, but all of it felt superficial and perfunctory, and none of them seemed to identify any way of helping me. And so, finally, in 2003, I was marked with the label of shame and disappointment that I was never allowed to forget. I was a high school dropout. This was all a protracted and extraordinarily negative experience that did indeed stick with me for life, like a shard of failure and insecurity lodged in the core of my being, always there and always reminding me that I couldn't even pull off high school, so what hope did I have of ever accomplishing anything? I got my GED in 2008, which, if anything, drew even more mockery and reminders that I was less than anything that mattered. That was until the beginning of this year, when I realized I was exhausted from carrying around this tormenting remnant of all the might-have-beens of a future that never was. I had tried to cope with this over the years in so many ways, some of them helpful and some of them not. The one thing I hadn't tried is actually facing it and moving forward from it. Luckily, our local Florida community college system has a far more productive approach to high school dropouts. Welcoming them. I needed to find out whether or not I could actually succeed in school. I couldn't sit with that unknown anymore, and so far it turns out I'm doing pretty well. I started taking classes in January, and right now I'm halfway through my third semester. College isn't just okay. It's been an incredibly positive experience. I've met and worked with so many bright people on campus, and I've made a lot of friends. I've gotten great feedback from my instructors, which is validating to me in a way that nothing else really is. I got a 4.0 in my first two semesters, and I'm on track to maintain that. Most of all, I've been able to see that this is something I can do, and do well. For possibly the first time in my life, I want to keep going to school. In Florida, graduation from community college guarantees acceptance to the state universities. It's what my wife did, and now she has a bachelor's and works as an English tutor. While I went into this assuming that I'd pursue a program in the social sciences, I've realized that what really draws my interest is statistics. I want to get a degree in statistics. I want to be a statistician. I want to work as a statistician. Our state universities have several master's programs in statistics, and that's where I want to be. My studies have given me structure. They've given me a long-term goal and something to keep working towards with the promise of real reward. Unlike the last time around, all of this does matter to me now. I feel the importance of my goals and purposes deeply, and they guide my life. My frame of reference for the experience of school had been from the perspective of a desperately struggling teenager dealing with untreated mental illnesses in an unhealthy environment. It turns out going to school is much different when you've had time to mature, develop values, and learn the lessons of experience from adult life. 
It's completely different now that I've figured out my gender, now that I can live as a woman, now that I've had my depression and anxiety treated, now that hormones have made that suffocating depersonalization vanish completely. And it's much easier to manage going to school when you're surrounded by people who support and encourage you. I want to make my wife proud. I want my kids to see that they can do this too. I want to give my family a comfortable life. And yes, there are people whose faces I want to shove this in. Going into this, I had no idea how much I would love college, how fulfilling and even healing it would be for me. The answer to that shard of insecurity inside me wasn't to keep building up more scar tissue around it. The answer was to get in there and start digging it out. And what I've seen so far tells me I'm headed in the right direction. College is great, and I'm so excited to keep sharing this journey with all of you.